An upcoming TikTok girl has been brutally murdered by her ex-boyfriend a few days after she posted a video with a very popular sound. We you believe men. Seven in weeks. In 2020, I'm not gonna lie, you believe I'm men. Not... And captioning it, she would never go back to her ex. Unfortunately for her, her ex-boyfriend was the one who came back to her and with a heavy rage and anger, he attacked her with a weapon, nearly and even beheading her. The story is going viral already and from what we know this incident happened in Koforidwa, Ghana on the 17th of June 2023. On a Saturday, the victim who goes by the name of Felicia Abena was said to be a 23-year-old girl who was in a relationship with her ex-boyfriend at the time, 25-year-old Godwin Dako. And it was said these two dated for about five years, probably when she was still a teenager at the age of 18 and he must have been 20 at the time. Despite the fact that she was killed five days after making that video on TikTok, it was said that they had broken up for over a year. But before their breakup, Felicia Abena and Godwin lived together as a couple. Sources even said she left her home with her parents and moved in with Godwin earlier on in their relationship. And it was said that Godwin was the one who took care of her, paid her fees, fed her, pretty much trained her because at the time they met, she was a teenager at the age of 18. Now, it's not clear what caused their breakup, but I can imagine it must have been a series of abuses because we've seen situations like this. Once a young man starts paying the bills and taking care of a young girl, there is a sense of ownership and such relationship can only be filled with possession and probably series of abuses that may not have been seen by other people around. And given the incident and the situation now of how he turned out to be a monster capable of killing and beheading a human being, I would not doubt if he was also physically abusive to her while they were dating, probably preventing her from talking to other guys and probably flaring up if he saw her talking to other guys. You know, I can imagine that that must have been the situation given what he turned out to be. And it's only reasonable for her to find fault in such behavior and deciding to end the relationship. It was said after they broke up, she moved out, but he kept harassing her. To him, this was someone that he had spent so much money on and so much time on, and for her to just live like that, obviously, he was not going to let her go without a fight. It was said that Godwin kept harassing her, kept trying to get to her, kept trying to meet her, and she only got tired of it, up to the point that she relocated to a different location a new apartment just so that he wouldn't know where she stayed. But as long as he's not in a different city, a crazy ex-boyfriend would always be a crazy ex-boyfriend. And it did not take long for Godwin to figure out her new place of residence. So after Godwin figured out her new place, through a series of questioning and investigation, he had to ask people, ask her friends, even sending spies after her or people who still speak to her to figure out where she lived. And when he got that information, he decided to pay her a visit. But it was not one of those visits where he called to request to come. Obviously, he was going to sneak up on her. And he did. Unfortunately for the situation, on the day that Godwin went to Felicia's new place in the compound, the neighbors were having a child naming ceremony, more like a dedication. So there was a celebration going on, loud music, and people just crowding up the whole place. This looks like a setup for something that he could easily get away with at this point. And so Godwin decided to fit into the crowd, acting like one of the guests of the child naming ceremony. Now, some sources claim that he saw her and asked to speak with her, and she was the one who let him into her apartment with hopes of them talking. Others said that he sneaked into her apartment when everybody else was busy with the celebration and attacked her. Regardless of which sources is true, what is certain is that Godwin was able to get into Felicia's apartment with her inside of it. And it's not clear if they had a discussion, but he immediately went for the kill, brutally attacking her with a knife. And after he did that, some sources said or claimed that he beheaded her. But other sources said he most possibly slit her throat to the point where it was almost decapitated. And after he was done, it was said he ran away through the backyard of the compound, you know, probably avoiding people from seeing him with blood stains, and also avoiding people from seeing the murder weapon. He went through a backyard fence, flew over it, through the murder weapon, and ran away. However, by the end of that Saturday, 
he turned himself in. At this point, they had not even discovered Felicia's body, I'm not sure. So he was the one who went to the police out of guilt and confessed to them what he had done, trying to let them know he was sorry and also letting them know why he did it. And the reason why he actually did it is not the reason a lot of people are saying because it seemed as though there was a specific reason why he was pushed to hurting this girl. Clearly, he could not even maintain it for a while or obviously he knew eventually they will figure out he was the one because he's the crazy one there and the only one who has been stalking her and bothering her. So after he went to the police, the police brought him to the apartment which Felicia's body was discovered in her pool of blood and she was taken to the morgue. During the investigation, they also needed the murder weapon, which he told them that he had tossed over the fence of Felicia's compound. And so the police took him back to the neighborhood to look for the murder weapon, where the neighbors finally got to see the young man that committed the atrocity in their neighborhood. And to say that some of them almost wanted to attack Godwin, almost trying to lynch him when the crowd got overwhelmed, because at this point they had all heard the story. The police could not continue the search for the murder weapon and they had to leave on time with Godwin because obviously they know the more the crowd got, the more difficult it would be for them to prevent a lynching if it comes down to it. And what was really ironic is that when Godwin went to the police station to confess, he wore a shirt that said, rest in peace. To me, this is crazy. To me, this seems as though this young man has been premeditating her murder for a long time. It gives me the impression that he knew he was going to kill her the moment he went to her house. Some sources made it seem like he tried to get her back and when she refused, that was when that happened. But when you hear his reason for killing her, it will make you understand that there's a very high possibility that he had planned to kill her from the onset. And it was not a moment of instance or an instant of anger. He left his home to her house for the purpose of killing her. Sources claim that after Felicia left Godwin, Godwin's friends and colleagues began to make fun of him. They began to mock him. They began to make jokes out of his situation, calling him a fool, calling him stupid for spending all that much for a girl only for her to most likely end up with another man. And who knows all the sacrifices he may have made along the way for her and his friends knowing about it would most likely throw it in his face and make him feel very stupid and make him feel used. It was due to that friendly peer pressure that Godwin acted maliciously with the intent to hurt this girl because obviously he felt hurt. Obviously his friends had made him feel a type of way and in order to probably do right by his friends, he decided to hurt her. The only problem is he just didn't have the mind to hold on. Most people would hold on for the police to investigate and catch them, but he couldn't even take it. After killing her, he had to go to the police station to route himself. Apparently, he's not the bad boy that he tried to be among his friends. He's not as bad as he poses to be with his colleagues. And it's unfortunate that his friends had to be the one to put this thing in his head, had to make fun of him. This is why it's important to choose your friends. This is why it's important to choose friends who are supportive of you in such a time. Friends who will lift you up after a breakup and not charge you into being malicious towards your ex. I mean, they had broken up for over a year. For over a year, your friends kept making you feel stupid to the point you could not take it any longer. Whatever happened to moving on? Whatever happened to getting another girlfriend? Whatever happened to making her jealous? How bad had your life been when she left that you had to trace her and find her new apartment to murder her? You could have just moved on. And now you're going to spend the rest of your life in prison, if not taking the electric chair, because all of this would have been avoided if you just moved on. The late girl's video is getting a rise in views on TikTok. She was an upcoming TikToker. She wasn't really that big. And it's sad that now she has passed. Everyone is on her page. Hopefully, people will get to learn from this situation. I can understand she was a very young girl when she met this young man who was also young. So these were two young people literally in love. And like every relationship, they run out of time. And it sours. And you just have to move on. And apparently, maybe she started seeing the signs that he was really crazy and did the right thing by moving on. But for some reason, the devil just kept coming back to her. It's unfortunate. It's really sad. Hopefully, a lot of young people learn from this and 
try not to dedicate so much so early on in a relationship. Personally, I feel that at 18 years old, why are you moving into your boyfriend's house? As a young girl, self, even as 23, why are you moving into your boyfriend's house and living with him? This is when they start to feel possessive. This is a clear case of possession. He started feeling like he owned her. And when she left, obviously, we've seen stories like this. this let's not act brand new to the situation. We've seen this multiple times. When a man starts doing something for a woman earlier on, some people say don't even need to do it for five years. Once or twice, they pay your bills. They start to feel a sense of entitlement. Talk more of when you move into their house and they feed you, clothe you, put a roof over your head, pay for your mother's bills, feed your family. That sense of ownership only doubles. And it's just a bed laid for disaster. And unfortunately for Godwin, he had the friends to push him into that madness. He had the friends and the cycle. He surrounded himself with people who are just as crazy as he is. People who could not lift him up, but just kept him down. Making him feel like the only way he could be out of this, or the only way he could feel better, is if he hurt her back or made her feel like a fool. And he, obviously, did the extreme. All right, there's an update to this story in the process of editing this video. All right, there's an update to this story. In the process of editing this video, it turned out that Godwin claimed the reason why he attacked Felicia was because she was pregnant for him and she aborted the pregnancy without his permission or without informing him and he got to hear about it from her friends and that was why he killed her do i believe it no i don't believe that that was the case i feel like he actually is trying to look for a way to get out of this because i think abortion is a crime so they are trying to look for a way to make it seem like he's a victim here and he acted out of what was done to him because for what is worth they had broken up over a year ago so at what point did he figure out she aborted a pregnancy at what point did she get pregnant that he found i just think he's looking for an excuse at this point i still believe the only reason why he killed her was because of peer pressure it was also learned that he actually told his mom after he killed her so it was his mom that advised him and pushed him and encouraged him to turn himself to the police and i think because of that they have had enough time to figure out a defense making it seem like she had some kind of abortion hopefully if an autopsy is done they should be able to tell if she did have an abortion and even if she did have an abortion i don't think it's enough reason for him to do what he did but you guys let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think. Did this update change anything? Does it make the story any different? Because I still feel he is the monster that he has showed himself to be. A lot of people would argue, of course, blame him for his own actions. Yes, he is the only one that will carry his curse. The court of law will not ask or charge his friends for giving him bad advice. Only him will go to jail. His friends will continue laughing. Because if he had a good friend there, they would have held him down and they would have probably helped him move on. But clearly he did not surround himself with the best people. And that is also important too. It's unfortunate for Felicia who did everything right. Who left him. Who even had to change her location because she knew how crazy he was. But of course when you're dealing with a madman, you will not win. Because they will go through extreme means just to get back at you. It's unfortunate. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this story kind of teaches a lesson and help young people or people in relationship be careful to identify red flags on time and running away from it before it gets too late. And not just running away from it, running far away from it because some people are really crazy. So thank you guys. Don't forget to like, share, comment your thoughts. And subscribe if you haven't subscribed. You could also turn on the notification button so should there be any future video, you'll be the first to get notified. Thank you.